So uh, I have a very simple question that probably requires a complex answer. Uh, what's your personal uh, prediction, expectation uh, about this winter, the next few months when it comes to coronavirus, when it comes to both uh, your, your best guess of how hard it's going to hit us and uh, what the political ramifications are going to be in the short term? Well, I mean, in terms of cases, it's already hitting hard. So uh, we're already seeing that. I, I, I don't see any reason why it gets better. Uh, winter months are good for viruses. It's why we get the flu in the winter. Uh, it, it, it just makes sense that this is going to keep going uh, through the winter. I think that once you start vaccinating, things will get significantly better. And, and, and I, I will also note the death rates are not spiking. I mean, they're up, but they're not spiking. So death rates are quite significantly lower than what they were in March and April. And it, it does seem like, you know, doctors know how to treat this better. Medication is better, just the whole way of handling it once you get into hospital. So the hospitals are full right now, but, uh, but I, I don't, I, I'm not seeing the spike in deaths that you would expect if you extrapolate from the, from the spring, but, but it would be a mistake to extrapolate from the spring because we know a lot more about the virus now. Um, you know, LA is shutting down. I, you know, there's a, I hear this, they're talking about stay at home orders in LA. I mean, no, I don't, you know, like Pasadena, which is part of LA County is like, no, we're not gonna, we're not gonna pay any attention to that. And the Pasadena City Council said, no, we're still doing dining and, and everything. Uh, so there's definitely a backlash, but some places are gonna shut down. Some places are gonna close down. Other places will be open. Uh, you know, the general trend is not good. The general trend is because the lessons learned are not good. The lessons are, uh, you know, mistakenly, uh, people are learning from it. Oh, we need more state in intervention. We need more state control. Um, you, you know, we're, capitalism can deal with these things. Freedom can deal with these things. Individuals are irresponsible. They can't deal with these things. So we need more, you know, authoritarian control of our lives, not less. So that's, that's my fear is that that is growing. I do think so once we get the vaccines out and people start getting vaccinated, uh, there'll be a significant decline because, uh, you know, if, if you vaccinate uh, susceptible people, then fewer people go to the hospitals, fewer people end up in ICUs, uh, and, uh, and, and that'll relieve the pressure on the hospitals. And then you start vaccinating other people, and then you get just, just the numbers, right? So if you vaccinate even 10% of the population, well, that's 10% that are not going to get it. So just the numbers start shrinking as you vaccinate more people. So I think the turnaround could be fairly quick if they can vaccinate quickly. And, and uh, you have to admire kind of the logistic challenge of doing all these vaccinations and you know people like Pfizer rising to the challenge. So what you're seeing is Pfizer is basically uh, leasing all of United's airplanes for cargo shipments of dry ice, you know, their, their thing has to be kept at minus 80 degrees Celsius. Um, it, so it, very difficult to transport. UPS has invested heavily in dry ice. And in so there's going to be this, this big logistical push to get these out to pharmacies. They're going to have to vaccinate quickly because it, it can only be away from freezing cold like that for a few days, or like three days, I think. Still has to be frozen, but not at those levels. So they can have to vaccinate quickly. It'll be interesting to see where the vaccination happens, who does them. Um, but hopefully they can use the infrastructure built for flu vaccines uh, to, uh, to get this done. Doctor's offices, CVSs, Wal uh, Walgreens and places like that. Uh, so once the vaccine's out, I'm fairly optimistic. That is a big cat. Is that not a big cat? Was that just the distortion of the camera? For a second, they looked like a mountain lion was walking into uh, into Jennifer's room. All right, uh, that's my take. I, you know, I don't know. I, 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 I'm constantly overly optimistic about these things. I never thought we'd get this third wave because I thought suddenly they'd get the act together by now. There was an interesting article today in the Boston Globe, actually, about universities in Massachusetts. So University of Massachusetts are open. 
And guess what the universities of Massachusetts are doing? They've hooked up with some la local labs. And what they're doing is, you know, brace yourselves. They're testing, tracing, isolating. Basically, these students are getting tested every week. They get results within 24 hours. They isolate the people who are infected. They trace who they've been with and, and try to isolate or, or test them. But they're testing huge quantities. So while Massachusetts cases are spiking, the cases within the universities are pretty low. Everything's fine. And whereas the other universities are seeing cases spike because people are partying and there's no testing and everything. Again, Massachusetts in the Boston area, things are, are very stable. So they, they, you, I would have thought months ago that state governments would have figured out and built up the infrastructure to test, trace, isolate. But n never, never underestimate the uh, incompetence and stupidity of government. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at yourunbookshow.com slash support, or on Patreon, or Subscribestar, or Locals, uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value, hopefully, you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if you... Even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. Right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.